a summary of the synthesis and reactions of acid and hydrides. And this is going to be all review from earlier in the chapter. We just didn't organize it like this. So, but uh, we want to look at the one major way we have of synthesizing an acid and hydride, and then the several reactions, many of which will be part of the inner conversion of the, the carboxylic acid and, the, and their derivatives with nucleophilic acyl substitution. But then we'll also take a look at the reactions with organometallics and hydride reduction as well. Now this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so quick review here. Right off, again, our interconversion of carboxylic acids and their derivatives from nucleophilic acyl substitution section. So uh, only real way we have to make an acid and hydride is to start with the even more reactive acid halide. And your acid halide, you just need to add the appropriate carboxylic acid to replace your halide with that carboxyl group. So, and you can do that again, uncatalyzed with the carboxylic acid or base catalyzed with the appropriate carboxylate instead. Now, once again, with acid catalyzed, you know, with generally with the acid chlorides and the anhydrides, as we'll see, we generally don't actually do the acid catalyzed reactions, but if you did, it would still produce in this case, the anhydride. Now, as far as the reactions of the anhydride, again, you can always convert the anhydride into the least less reactive uh, carboxylic acid derivatives. You can't turn it directly into an acid chloride, but you can make an ester, an amide, a carboxylic acid, or a carboxylate. And that's the first four reactions for your acid and hydrides. The uncatalyzed conversion into an ester means you've got to have the appropriate alcohol to replace your, a uh, your carboxylate with the, or your carboxy, I guess you'd say, with the appropriate alkoxy group instead. And again, uncatalyze the appropriate alcohol, base catalyze the appropriate alkoxide ion. And again, technically you do the acid catalyzed. So, but again, on, on paper, it looks great, but in practice, not something we're going to do a ton of. We can make the corresponding amide here, uncatalyzed by using the appropriate amine. So base catalyzed, the appropriate amide ion. And again, acid catalyzed, not something you'll see routinely done, but it is possible, theoretically possible on paper and stuff. Finally, you can make the carboxylic acid with water uncatalyzed. Technically acid catalyzed would get you there, but you're probably not going to see it. And then finally, you can use hydroxide to form the carboxylate, just like we saw with the acyl, uh, acyl chloride. So all the reactions we're doing here, identical to what we saw with the acyl halide. So just starting with the next uh, most reactive carboxylic acid derivative. So the reactions of an acid and hydride with the organometallics, the Grignard or the organocuprates, identical or essentially analogous to what we saw with the, uh, the acyl halides as well. So in this case, if you use a Grignard, so you're going to use excess and the first equivalent is going to substitute. So in this case, the methyl Grignard, a methyl group for your carboxyl leaving group. But again, Grignards react with ketones, so it'll keep reacting in the presence of excess. to add a second equivalent and give you a corresponding tertiary alcohol. Now, if you want to stop at one equivalent, just like with the acyl halide, that's where you're going to use the Gilman reagent, this lithium dialkyl cuprate. And again, the key is that the lithium dialkyl cuprate won't react with the subsequent ketone you produce, allowing it to be your final product. So finally, our hydride reductions just like the organometallic reactions, also totally analogous to what we saw with acyl halides here for the acid and hydrides. And we can use lithium aluminum hydride and technically or sodium borohydride works as well. And in this case, your initial reaction is you're going to place your leaving group here with a hydride and get the aldehyde, but it's going to keep reacting just like sodium borohydride, lithium aluminum hydride reduce aldehydes further. Let's add a second H and give you the corresponding alcohol. Now, if you want to stop at the aldehyde here, so you got to use a special reducing agent here. And once again, this is our lithium triterpetoxy aluminum hydride and got to use it at low temperatures here as well. And this is how you'll stop at the aldehyde, just again, like what we saw with the acyl halide. So totally analogous. So if you took all the reactions for the acyl halides and matched them up with what we see for the acid hydrides, it would be nearly identical. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure that other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes to this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems for carboxylic acids and their derivatives, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com. And one quick thing, I'm starting to release brand new OCHEM 2 final exam rapid reviews as well, also part of my premium course on chadsprep.com.